Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna show you guys a video that I probably should have did a long time ago, honestly, but things have got changed, different products like this, don't like that, so I think I finally got it dialed in to the stuff that I actually really like as far as Duck Dog Hunting Loadout 2020. And uh, I'm gonna go over each and every item. Someone had given me this idea, so I wanna say thank you for that. I never even thought about this, so, and I thought it was a great idea because we do this with our duck hunting gear too as well. If you don't, if you want to see that, you guys can check it out here on this card. But anyways, I'm going to go over each one, not spend a ton of time on it, but I'm going to go over what I use with Rocky, my duck hunting dog, how I use it, why I use it, then just show you a little clip of it and what I think about it, and then we'll go through all the gears. So uh, stay tuned. Let's do it. We'll go ahead and start with the small stuff first, and then we'll work our way to the big stuff. I'm going to show you guys that I'm using the Sport Dog Wetland Hunter. It's the Sport Dog 1825. And I've had this for basically since I had Rocky. Rocky will be three in November. I've used it for two seasons because he was a young pup the first one. So two seasons. It's a little bit of a, I would say, overkill for most people because I've done this in some of the other videos and I've kind of said that. I think they have a 425. And I would suggest if you want to save a little bit of money, this was really expensive and there's a lot of stuff on here that is totally unnecessary for me. So basically I have something of a, another level that I really don't need. It will run two different dogs or maybe even more like four dogs on one controller but anyways i love this thing it's like i said it's sport dog it does the trick other than that i mean there's not much to say about this you can go from levels one to nine and then it does the beeping too but other than that this thing works up to like i think it was a mile and i, I did like that here's kind of some stuff that i have this is all stuff that i have and i use right so here's some basically toenail clippers and once it's usually if he's out a lot and doing a lot of things his his now stay trimmed down because you don't want them getting snagged on something so i keep those trimmed and short um you just gotta be careful when you do it you need to definitely go online and check this one actually has a depth marker so you can't overcut their nails you can only put it in so far i don't remember i think i got this at petco so i keep that try to keep his, his nails trimmed up uh, i got this this is a de-shedding brush and he labs i don't know what it is i wish they didn't shed because i could i wouldn't mind even having rocky in the house but labs shed so bad i cannot stand hair dog hair in my house on my couch on my floor and all that stuff so that's just my opinion but that's how i feel about it um whistle i don't really have a specific whistle there's probably something i could have that's better i just use the sport dog it's a little cheap one um that's for hand signals and you know, basically just to get his attention. So I do use a whistle and boy, I can tell you it comes in handy. It's like when I give him left, right, back signals, um, you know, there's stuff we can do to get better, but this is what I use, just the cheap one. I know there's some other whistles out there that I think look really nice. I just haven't bought them. This works just fine. So it's got a little cork uh, ball in there. So maybe when it rains, I don't know if it won't work as good or not. This right here is made by Browning. I actually bought this at Cabela's. This is to put dog food in and you can use it for a drinking bowl. And I really like this, it's got a little clip on it. And I take this on hunts. One thing I said in a podcast, and by the way, we have the MVM show. We do, we talk about duck hunting dogs, talk about duck hunting, we talk about big game hunting, we talk about military, uh, law enforcement. So we talk about a lot of things. The MVM show, you can find it on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, anything you basically wanna find it on. But one of the things we talked about was having a little bit of handful of dog food with you because you don't want to feed them too much a full meal when you're out in the field because they get sick but if you know that you're going to be in the field all day long you're going to hunt hard all day it would help to have a little just one little handful of food to give them when it gets slow to kind of get their energy just like me and you you know we get a snack or we have a drink something like that same thing for a dog you don't want to leave them uh hungry while you're out there stuffing their face they're the one doing all the work, right? They're the one going to get the birds. They're the ones that are uh, spent, really spending all the energy. So you want to take care of them. So in the inside of it, uh, there's a spot. Uh, this, you can put the dog food in. I really like this thing. In fact, like I said, it's browning. So you're just going to have to go off of what it looks like. I couldn't tell you. I got it at Bass Pro. I think I said Cabela's earlier, but it was Bass Pro. Same thing now. You can put the dog food in here. This thing will come over top and then when the food's down in there you can cinch this up so it won't spill out close it up zip it up and i do i use this all the time like i really do and then this side's to put water in and it's nice though because these all mush down so i keep my food in there for the hunt close this back up and if you don't have access to the water which if you're dry field hunting you could bring bottled water and put it for your dog if not they'll probably drink the pond water if you don't want them drinking that 
you can pour water in there. But this thing's slick. I really, that's like one of my favorite pieces I bought for Rocky. All right, next up is a short leash. I think this is a 18 incher. Um, I probably wouldn't even mind like a 12 inch, but this is the best thing I could find on Amazon. Nothing special, but the reason for this is when I'm training them, I use this a lot to stay steady, right? Because it's right here. It's right, but he's right, if he's right by my side, he's right there. I don't have this long leash that I gotta have all over my arm, hanging on the ground for him to get tangled up in, like the one back there. I'll go with that in a second. This one's a short leash. I think, like I said, 12 inches would be better, 12 or 14, but I think this is an 18. And this is just to keep him steady when you're training. But also, if he, you're having issues with him breaking in the field, you could use this leash. Um, I, I use it sometimes to keep him, if he's just getting not steady and I wanna make sure he does stay that way, I'll put this on him and I'll put my gun down, put this on him and make sure he stays steady. Leave slack in it and if he goes to break, you got the tension there. Because if, if he knows that you're keeping tension on his neck, you know sometimes they'll be more steady because they know you're there, but I don't like him to know that. We work on that in the off season Try not to have any issues of that at all. This is a Dokken dead foul. One thing I like this for, and I was when I trained Rocky and still now, is when he's running, this thing will slap him up like a real duck. You know, it will kind of move up so they kind of learn how to hold it and move with it. Because if not, it's it's bouncing up, hitting them in the face. Anyways, they usually have like a black knob so you can throw it a little bit farther. But I use that. Uh, it floats. I used it in the water for him uh, just to get him used to putting his mouth. It's funny because when you use these small bumpers and when they're a pup and they're getting older, I'd notice they're so used to putting their mouth around something small. When you move to something big, they're almost like, I can't get my mouth that big, which they can. It's just like a mental thing, it seemed like. But using this, throwing it in the pond, the colors, it's, it's a really great training device and you can actually inject these with like scent from waterfowl. I also have uh, the white bumpers and these are great tools. Um, you really can't have enough of these. I remember I bought my first pack, I think it was like a white, a white, black, and a orange uh, from Amazon. And most of all the stuff you can get on Amazon. These are the two inch bumpers. And this is what I started with him as a pup and they're great tools and I thought, okay, that's all I'm gonna need. Then I end up having like 15 to 20 bumpers. And there is specific reasons for it in training but we won't go over that here. If you guys have never seen my duck dog series, uh, the beginner, where basically me as a new dog trainer using Chris Aiken's DVDs, which is something uh, pop up on the screen here, you guys can check out if you wanna train your own dog. I'm telling you guys right now, you can do it. I know this is a loadout video of everything we use, but I wanna let you guys know, if you have five minutes a day, you can train a dog. I know that makes it sound simple when they're a puppy, it's not so easy, right? Because you gotta feed them, you gotta take care of them, you gotta clean up after them. They're chewing on things, I, I get that, trust me, I went through all of it. If you have five minutes a day, you can train yourself a good duck dog and no need to spend thousands of dollars on a trainer. And I'm not trying to, you know, say not to do that because, you know, having a professional do it is awesome. But it's just, if you don't have the money for that, I'm just letting you guys know, you can do it yourself. If I can do it, as busy as I am, anybody can do it. And uh, I'm not that smart either, and I think I have a pretty good duck dog. So these white bumpers um, are great tools. They're visually, they can see them really good. The, the ones that they say you can see the best, and I think I got like six of these. These are the three inch. I got two of these, and these are the white black. And they say visually they can see these the best, just because the white and black just stands out on any background. It doesn't matter what kind. When you're throwing them up in the air, the, the dog can see it very well. Now I also got the orange bumpers. And by the way, the, all these bumpers are Avery, but the orange bumpers are for blind retrieves. So if you don't plan on getting into that kind of stuff, don't worry about buying the orange bumpers, but I did. Anyways, that's what these are for. I got probably, I got probably like 10 of these. And I'll go out in a field now that he's got that advanced uh, mark, you know, blind retrieve skill. I'll put several out and where he doesn't know they're there and then I'll send them. All right, next thing uh, that I have and use consistently and all these things are things I use consistently right but is the gunner kennel uh, if you know anything about dogs and kennels you'll know this is one of the top kennels on the market um, it is very expensive I will tell you that and uh, they do do some discounts I think they might do military if you're in school something like that though I think they give you like 10% off and maybe even law enforcement and stuff like that I don't know but anyways these this is one of the best purchases I've ever made and the thing is just like everything else I get and buy, you don't always need the most expensive stuff. That doesn't always mean everything, but 
there is some things and certain things that are quality. They'll take care of you basically if something breaks. In the summer, it's way cooler and there's tests they did. I did a video right here on this kennel. If you want to look it up, all this stuff, I've pretty much done reviews on all of it. But this kennel, it stays cooler in the summer and it stays warmer in the winter. And I have proof with thermometer readings and temperature readings. And it's not just your average kennel, but um, it locks. So there's plenty of room. He's a big old lab. He's a 95 pound lab. So I had to get the large, it locks. Um, you can lock it here, so if you go inside, you're not worried about someone trying to steal your dog, especially when they're a puppy. More people tend to steal puppies, but Rocky barks at everybody that comes near my truck. It's got four points to strap down in your truck. It's got carrying handles. This thing on the side is actually a cold weather cover, and you put this on, and you can roll the sides down in the winter to keep the warmth in there, and it does keep it warm in there. I've had Rocky out in 20 degree weather overnight, come back out there, and he is warm like he was laying on a blanket inside the house. So you can roll these down in the winter and roll them up in the summer. All right, the next piece I use, uh, situation dependent, I use this Rig'em Right uh, ground blind. So there's three straps in this one that I like. Strap. That was the bottom. And there you go. So that's the side view. And like I said, he's a 95 pound dog, so for him to be able to get in this, any dog can get in this because their labs ain't going to be much bigger than that um, for your hunting dog. And I like this one too. This color is good depending where you're at, but usually like in pit blinds here in California, everything's dark. The mud, you know, the branches, the pit is black. So really, I probably should mud this thing and get it dark and covered so it's darker instead of this light marsh color. Uh, I think the timber color would be better in this pattern. But anyways, even if you don't, they're, they got all these slots to put uh, branches and brush and all that kind of good stuff in there. If I remember right, I think Alex Langbell is the one that suggested this to me. Because I looked at several and I was just like, ah, those are too small. I don't like those. Uh, but this one is perfect. You can keep the flaps open and uh, he just goes in there. Usually what he does, because he's so big, I open both sides and he comes in the back side and lays down inside there. He's too big to go in and turn around. I've seen small labs go in there, turn around in videos and stuff. But he's just too big for that. But my biggest thing is I like to stay mobile. And what I love about this one, again, kind of I showed you already, but you can kind of like an accordion. It just goes right down. One buckle, two buckle, and boom. That's the profile of it. You can put it in your cart or however you carry stuff out there. But it's very um, small and compact. That was my seller to me, is he could fit in it and it went down to a compact. One of the last things pretty much is this Mo Marsh. I have went through probably, this is my third dog stand, I think. This one by far is my favorite. So there's a little bit more to talk about. It's kind of like a review, but I'm trying not to make this a review. I'm just showing our, our loadout. This one thing's in certain situations like in a marsh, or somewhere I need to, we're in water, I need to keep them out of it. Obviously, I'm not gonna use that ground blind one, so I would need this one. You can open both ends. This is kind of the back end. I mean, like I said, you can use both sides. So like I said, you can open both ends, and uh, this is when, to me, when there's no cover. Like, there's some places you go, you want your dog. I've wanted Rocky. I've had him on an open dog stand, and it was just like, oh man, he's a black dog in like tan colored toolies. To me, he just stuck out like a sore thumb especially when they're moving their head all around and looking and stuff, which at the same time, you want them to see the birds. So I went from the open one and they were wobbly. He'd jump on it and he'd be shaking around. I was like, man, this thing is not stable. And then sometimes it'd be too short, sink down in the mud way too far. So this one, I really like it because it's got these flat paws, I call, I'll call them. But the cool thing is they can unlock and then you can extend them way out. Just haven't opened it. I never open it because this, this height always works in our marsh but you can lock that and then these will fold in. I'll show you how it folds up too. That way to be more mobile again. But those help from it sinking so far in the mud and if you need to raise it, water levels are really high. You can raise both, all four legs and then you can brush this whole thing up. Um, I've used this a lot. Uh, you can pop these down and zip it up. It's kind of nice having this too. In the marsh you can set things on it, like set your gun down or just use it as a little, you know, something to put stuff on. So I'm gonna pull this off and show you how, uh, another way that I use it. So that comes off. 
So when I'm not using this with the cover on it in certain situations, I just want him on a stand because I like him to be on a stand. It's too much temptation for him to break when he's on the ground, in my opinion. It's just something I don't want to have to worry about or think about hunting. This will come off, this pops off, that folds in, you can lock it back, swing that down, and then boom, you got a dog stand, uh, an open dog stand. Uh, these do not detach, which would be kind of nice if they did, but it's just more stuff to worry about losing or getting messed up. If this ever gets slack and just really drooping real bad, it's I like how they have it set up because you can go under here on these straps, and it probably needs to be done anyways. You can crank it up. And there you go. Now folding it up, it's really nice. Can help you really be mobile. There's two of the quick releases, and I might do this wrong the first time, so bear with me. That one, you pull that, it releases it. This one has a quick release too. Pull it. I fold these flat, fold this one over top. There you go. You can fit it in a cart. All right, guys, and then lastly, you can noob a dog food. This is what I've been feeding Rocky for about a year, and they support us, and I'm so glad I use them now. It's a 30-20 blend. I started Rocky off with another brand. Uh, it's slipping my mind right now. I don't know why, but anyways, I've been using you can noob it for a year. It's 30% protein, 20% fat. Gives them energy, and it's a great product. Honestly, I love it, and Rocky loves it too, and it keeps his coat looking nice. And the biggest thing that I like about this, guys, is that it has glucosamine and chondroitin which both those are really good for the joints because labs especially labs they have a tendency to have their shoulders go bad on them and this is chris uh, aiken has been using this for years he's the one that suggested it to me he believes in this stuff he's been using it for years and it's kept his dog's joints super healthy so yeah that's what we use um hopefully that was what you guys wanted to see as some people have been asking for it to see all the stuff we use for rocky that is the stuff I consistently use. I've used different things in the past and end up getting rid of them or upgrading because I didn't like something. And uh, this is what we're happy with now. Like this is the stuff that works. This is the stuff I've put through the test. It's been abused and used and it's, it's passed with flying colors. I really like it. So I feel like there's probably something I have forgot. I know people that are dog trainers and watch these videos probably think I'm leaving so much stuff out and I, I probably am like I said I don't mean to it's just my inexperience so if there's anything down in the comments below that maybe I forgot I probably I might have it but maybe I just forgot to put it in this video I kind of went through everything I think I got everything but if I didn't you guys comment down below let me know what I may have forgot or what not necessarily I need but might be nice to add to the bag of little goodies for the dog and uh, let me know down in the comments below. Guys, if you like this video, if it's kind of helped you out and gave me some ideas of what you might need, give this video a thumbs up. Always appreciate all the support. Again, check out our podcast, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time.